And um, good afternoon, everyone. It's a pleasure for me to introduce our next guest speakers, Thomas and Ahmed from the Swiss Federal Institute of Technology at Lausanne. Um, their talk today is about interoperability via open source developments, and they'll be presenting their developments on interoperability in Top Solid. So I'll hand off to you guys, and um, thank you very much. All right, thank you, Jed. Uh, and hi, everyone. Uh, this is Thomas and Ahmed. I'll just start by sharing the screen, maybe. Uh, so, yep. So I mean, I imagine now you you can see my screen. Yes, cool. So yes, uh, we are talking about interoperability via open source developments, with the example of Top Solid, where we developed two connectors to two plugins: uh, Top Solid Speckle Connector and the Rhino Inside Top Solid Connector. So. Um, as Jed mentioned, we are part of the Swiss Federal Institute of Technology, more specifically the CNPA lab. It's the numeric culture for architecture projects, which is in French culture numérique du projet architectural based in, in Lausanne. Uh, here is the link for the lab's website, if you're interested. So uh, next, more about the lab. It was founded and directed by Professor Bernard Cash who is in charge of CAD CAM at uh, the School of Architecture of EPFL. Uh, in the lab, we do a lot of research, teachings for bachelor and master. And, um, and so this is about uh, the lab, about the speakers, myself, I'm Ahmed Well. I'm an architect uh, and a researcher. Um, <clears throat> I'm sorry, I have a flu. So yes, and um, I'm, a, I'm a scientific assistant at EPFL and most recently a PhD candidate at the School of Architecture of Grenoble in France. Uh, basically, I studied architecture between Egypt, France, and then also Spain before doing a master's degree in digital design in Nancy in France. I also worked as a TA in Cairo, but also um, in two different universities in Cairo. And then nowadays I'm, I'm based in Lausanne. So I leave the word to Thomas to introduce himself. Hi everyone, we live in Lausanne, near, near from Lausanne, just on best place to to study and, and research for, for uh, that uh, connector, speckle, speckle connector. Um, I, li I like uh, a challenge, a lot of challenge with EPFL and many projects. I make uh, develop a uh, Mintello pro uh, software for project management and a lot of uh, other uh, dev tools with Autodesk software on, and some open source projects. Uh, yes, I like um, cheese and walking in the snow. <laughs> cool. So um, maybe just just like uh, a few word. Uh, the the speckle community published an article an article about us. If you want to know more about us about the development we do, you can find it here on uh, on that on featured developers on the blog. So yeah, that was a parenthesis. So we are done for the, tr the introduction. And now let's talk about the subject of today. Uh, it's interoperability. And uh, it's the, the point of start is the state of interoperability today, which is, um, well, what we observe is that it's, it's always file-based, which is not the best thing. These file exchanges are most mostly proprietary formats. Well, and if we use IFC, the IFC is not always well understood. And uh, if it's well understood, sometimes it does not work well for some software. We don't know if it's intentionally done. So based on all this, we, we can find that, that the only solution is to go to open source solutions. 
And uh, well, the objectives we have by conducting this research is to enhance interoperability between any type of AEC software and mechanical engineering software. So in our example, it's top solid, but we are coming to that. Um, we don't want to this to be based on file exchanges because we, th we think that it's not working well and we want to link the industrial or, or mechanical engineering world to the AEC. We think that there are a lot of lessons that we can learn from the industrial engineering uh, sector that we can learn to and implement into AEC. Um, yeah, so, and also another thing, we are thinking about a better, a better design process, which is, which will lead definitely to a better fabrication. So having this in mind, we want to respond to different collaborative scenarios. We want to suppress file exchange and to have real time solutions and also to extend existing functionalities, like for example, parametric design. Well, if it's existing in the, it's it's part of the, 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 the state of mind in the industrial engineering world. So maybe we don't like, we don't want to reinvent something that exists. We want to link and to build on this. So having said that, the methodology we are following into this development is very simple. We identify the needs based on, on specific use cases. And then we check for existing open source solutions. Then we do a feasibility study, like is it technically possible? Is it practically possible? And all kind of stuff. Then choose the solutions and the fun part, start coding if we are able to. So <clears throat> having said that, we talked about top solids. Maybe some of you don't know what is Top Solid, what is this software. So Top Solid is a CAD CAM software um, who is known for an associative link between design and manufacture, which if I may explain better, it's it means that we can stay in the same software, start by doing the design um, up to generating the, the, the fabrication or the CNC machining program into the same software and keeping it all associative. So if you modify the initial design, all will be automatically updated at the end, including the, the CNC program, which is rarely the case in, in the market. So that's one of the, the strong elements, but also uh, Top Solid has an integrated PDM, which is product data management. Uh, ERP, which is enterprise resource, um, well, with, it's, it's an own term. I, I forgot the P, what it stands for. Um, so yeah, but what's important is that Top Solid is used in the wood and mechanical engineering world. It's IFC certified, and currently it's in transition to architecture. And in our lab, we use it a lot in our research and teachings, especially teachings done by Professor Cash. So now what I can do is share this video with you. It's about a pavilion that was done into the course of stereotomy, which is done by Professor Cash in the, in the second bachelor year. So it shows how do we use um, top solid into a practical case. So I leave you with the video. Maybe just to comment some stuff here, what we are showing is that the initial uh, sketch, when we deform it, all the panels on it are, up, are updating automatically. And also we have like the different files constituting, cons that constitutes the different elements like the structure, the panels, and, um, and also like the documentation, we'll come to that. Yes, like uh, the plans, the drawings, and also the bill of quantities. 
So it's all integrated into the same software. And then here, what I was saying about uh, the CNC program machine. So we can start by simulating the program, generating it and like visualize it before actually like fabricating. So, and the fabrication itself, and then mounting the pavilion into place. So yes, so here, here I showed you the video. Um, so having, having talked about this, we are using Top Solid as a main software in our lab and um, to enhance interoperability with the AC world, we thought about two solutions that we are presenting today. The first one is a Rhino inside Top Solid. The second one is Speckle into the Speckle connector for Top Solid. So basically, like someone may ask, why two solutions? Why isn't one just enough? So it's basically because the two solutions respond to do, to two different needs and two different scenarios. The Speckle Top Solid is a collaborative scenario. It's multidiscipline, multi-software, and as it's based on a server connection, people can be physically dispatched. We, they don't have to be like at the same place. However, Rhino inside Top Solid, it's a different solution. It's one single user who is on his own machine, like using both software, like Rhino and Top Solid. He wants like to have design, fabrication, and scripting all to all together into the same solution. Uh, so here we have like the two softwares plus the plugins that we, that they have and all onto the same computer. So having talked about the two solutions, we start by talking about each one apart. And then it's now I leave the word to Thomas, who is going to talk about Speckle, the Speckle connector in Top Solid. Thomas, it's yours. Thanks, Ahmed, for, for the introduction. Uh, I want to show you, uh, by, by example, the, the first of, of Speckle and the first of, of Top Solid. The, the, the thing is to multiply the forces uh, and have a, a nice, nice re result on, on real time. We, the, 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 Result is the real-time collabor collaboration, uh, like uh, speckle, speckle uh, fun. Um, yes, the the collaboration is easy, easier with the web tools, with the web viewer tools. Uh, no non-professional can uh, view in any desktop or mobile uh, devices. Um, uh, the the best thing for for Speckle, I think, is the the Git versioning uh, for for programmer people uh, who use uh, use uh, Git. Uh, it's it's very common to to push 
uh, modification, the, the colleague uh, make the, the merge or, or add a other modification and in the final step you have a, a big project because any people can collaborate on the same file on same project. In the world, yes. If you want me to go to the next page, just tell me. Okay, and uh, the best for for our, our project is open source and connected with every tools we we can do, like uh, Top Solid or IFC or other um, li library. The, the strength for, for of top solid is the the parametric approach with associative. It's very important for mechanic uh, industry, mecha mechanical industry, or um, or building a very organic or complex form. Um, Yes, I think uh, it's cool. Top Solid can can connect to the PDM. Uh, PDM is a um, is a um, server uh, to centralize all pieces, all um, uh, assembly or yes, or composition uh, pieces co composition, and like. Uh, like um, a big machine or, or uh, building. Uh, uh, Top Solid has also versioning, but it, it's not exactly the same than Speckle, but uh, the, the approach is similar. Um, I can, uh, Hamed, you can switch or I screen, I, thank you. In this slide, we 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 see the the actual connector. Uh, in Speckle, we have a Reno, Revit, AutoCAD, Civil, and many other um, tools. And we we found it's very important to to have a tool for CNC for programming, uh, machining, CNC machining for automating the 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 construction the integrates uh, for for the modeling to uh, mach machining and uh, automatic uh, construction like the the video you you watch and the um, with Top Solid, we have all. We have the programming, modeling, programming, and the you you can send in in few steps the results in the machine for 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 hood or uh, other uh, metal industry. Thank you. Uh, we can watch now a little short uh, video with a complex form in this case you 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 have the the model in top solid you send the the result in speckle and after we can load the result in Reno very very short but um, you show in five seconds what what you you do uh, probably in one hour uh, in in the time in classic uh, manipulation because you must you must export the file and after you go in the other software you import the file and probably you have uh, a lot of problem because the geometry is not compatible and you you must uh, transform or in some time you 
you you you uh, modeling modelize from zero the project in your software. You you watch the the little video. In the in the video you have the the comeback. You uh, it's very you must make a little. Um, yes, perfect. You you see the Reno in the Reno you modify the form and after you send in top solid the result. It's the 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 sense is in the opposite because you can uh, modify in top solid send in Reno on comeback. It's very powerful for for a big team because um, you in in five minutes you can modify show the result in the software uh, like Top Solid or uh, Revit AutoCAD and after you come back with with the modifying pieces. Okay, you can go to the next. We we have um, in the in the architecture uh, laboratory, we use a lot of the, these um, villa. The house is uh, created by Le Corbusier, and um, we have uh, in, in the in this uh, here we have the link with more uh, info. And we have a, a print, print cloud um, for this uh, real house. And also we have uh, 3D uh, modeling in Revit in Archicad. Okay, thank you. We we show now the the complex uh, possibility to to modeling uh, in your um, top solid is uh, you can I mean you can make the the video yes full screen thank you uh, it's very short probably yes <coughs> just to say that. This we, we just made a, a quick mod, a, like a very small modification to the design of Le Corbusier. So Le Corbusier fans, don't be mad at us. <laughs> okay. We changed the original uh, equation. But um, we have a uh, three parameter uh, for the high, the number of the of pieces and in Five uh, second, you change the geometry on all is parametric. That's very funny because uh, in AutoCAD it's difficult to to make the the, the similar construction with parameter. In top solid is very easy and powerful. Uh, the, the perfect result. Now we we have uh, this similar uh, test we, with the we, uh, same house. I um, send the result from top solid to speckle. In speckle, uh, we can cho choose the the object, send uh, many v version. Uh, you can can make a comment and commit the the modification. And after three seconds, you have the results in the browser.
it's a public link. You can uh, show the, the link. You can, uh, uh, in your uh, favorite browser, you can copy the link and navigate in the, the result. You show all my tests. That's for, for me uh, easy to 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 uh, create new version and is like Git. You have a branches and commit different commits. He, he has uh, two or three commits in the test demo test. Probably in the re real life you have a uh, ten or or twenty uh, modification in one day or more. Probably. I open now the the Reno software to to go the, from Speckle to Rhino. It's different because uh, before I send, now I receive the geometry and is the same um, result in Rhino. It's we have a quick demo, but um, uh, in yes, it's perfect to 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 can try this tool if you want. You we can share something uh, code uh, source code or or uh, complete code. You you have um, access on GitHub of all this work. Um, Yes, we we have a um, we start for, from I think uh, two 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 years ago this project and we start our API top solid API and, and we we start uh, from the beginning bugs. And we have now um, a proof of concept from the um, the workflow. Uh, yes, we can switch uh, here the slide. For 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 uh, sorry sorry sorry, <laughs> I search my my text. Um, perfect. The the now we have a, a very nice team with Pekel because um, in, in the beginning we don't have this uh, Pekel guide. Now we have a, a nice uh, documentation with example with. Um, with different uh, discussion and I think it's easier if you want to to make a new connector you can go on the guide and you start in in one day or two two day uh, with your software or your uh, new application uh, it's very funny to to read and try uh, the, the example on the page. Uh, that's the the best. Uh, I think the best uh, meeting with the team with with uh, three people. Easy is, is is probably in the room. And um, easy is the the for, for us uh, the best uh, superhero because she she. Uh, help us for for that the connection and we we have uh, many uh, many uh, bugs we can found and solve with with the help special help and uh, probably uh, the the similar uh, uh, team e with top solid because top solid is is very complex uh, is is not web tools is desktop tools 
un complexe API. Um, and uh, yes, you, we we try a lot of um, uh, approach to to connect this Bosu world. Okay. So, so uh, I don't know. You wanted to say uh, something else on that point? No, no. I think yes. Big, a uh, big, big thanks to to Speckle teams and Top Solid teams. Probably uh, the 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 collaboration make this project uh, very very benefit. Yes. I remember that meeting that was a, like a historic day when things finally worked out for us. And um, I have to say that we started from the bottom. The article about writing your own connector was not here. So, so just what I want to say is that if someone today wants to develop their own connector on Speckle, it will be an easier task than ours. So if you manage to do it, you can do it. <laughs> so. We, I'm going to start presenting the next solution, which is Rhino Inside Top Solid. Uh, so the first one was the Speckle connector for the Top Solid. Now it's Rhino Inside. So I think some of you may have heard about uh, Rhino Inside Revit, which is the most famous. But just like a quick word, Rhino Inside in a general matter, it's um, it's a larger project. It's more general. It's an open source project that lets Rhino launch inside of a host software. So inside is like it's in the literal term. So it launches at, within the same process of a host software, sharing the same space memory. So what we have is a direct interaction between the two APIs. So here it's in the in the image we can see that we have uh, like top solid where we launched Rhino and then Grasshopper inside of it. So why do we need this plugin? Why is it useful? What are are the use cases? Well, basically it's Grasshopper for the visual scripting part and also for the different uh, plugins that are developed by the community, the, all the useful plugins that are there. Also the lists and data trees, which is very interesting when it comes to computational design. Rhino itself is very handy when it comes to NURBS and surface operations, while softwares like uh, Stop Solid and the mechanical engineering are better with with the solid modeling, but like Rhino is, is more powerful on the surface modeling. So what we wanted is to mix both parametric approaches because um, as I said earlier, and as you saw in the in Thomas um, presentation, Top Solid already has a concept of parameters. So it's not like we are going to introduce parametric design, but we are like, we want to multiply the forces and join forces between the parametric part of Top Solid and the parametric part of uh, Grasshopper. So just like um, this schema to explain the structure of the plugin, so we have Top Solid, which is the host um, software, where we have where we come and integrate our plugin that permits Rhino to launch inside Top Solid. So in red is what we add. So basically, this plugin lets Rhino launch inside Top Solid, and inside Rhino will launch Grasshopper, and in Grasshopper. We inc we like we included more more uh, components that are specific more for those who are not familiar with Grasshopper more commands more buttons that are more specific to to Grasshopper when it launches within um, Top Solid. We'll, we'll we'll come to that in the in the examples in the demos. Uh, so yeah, just be before showing you some videos and some interesting stuff. Just to tell you that there are, when we develop, there are three possible scenarios for this plugin to launch. Either we have both Rhino and Grasshopper windows, so it's like in the in the screenshot. So we have the window of Top Solid, with, where we have also the window and the UI of Rhino, and then also the window and the UI of Grasshopper. There is another possibility. We'll have another example that will show it where we don't show the Rhino window, we only show the, the Grasshopper window. And then there is the third one, which is for the moment, it's hypothetical, but we'll come to this. We want to, we don't have 
like we don't have examples of it, but we want to implement it in the future, which is the headless mode. So no UI windows, neither of them, just like the script that runs in the background, and then we have the result that shows in, into top solid. So having said that, maybe we can start by a first demo. So this demo is just about this is one the use case when we don't have the the window of Rhino, only Grasshopper is launched. Um, just like a few like like a quick thing to to show you is that we don't have like here in the taskbar any Rhino window because it's launched within the host program, which is top solid here. So yes, so here what we are doing is changing some parameters. So here we have the the file that the well. Um, well, the, we have the different entities, the different parameter entities into top solid. We will access them with, from uh, Grasshopper and then modify their values. So for example, the first one is a text parameter, which I use to model this part. And just I'll enter another text. I'll say uh, modified in Rhino, and then bam, connect. And as you see, the value changes into top solid by entering the value into Grasshopper. So that's one case for, for a text parameter. We can go next. And th this will be an integer type of parameter. So we'll change also the value. We'll basically, currently, as we are all, we are still working in progress, what we do is like we search for the name of the parameter, we get it, and then we change the, the name of the value. That, that's what the components do. So here we'll, we'll add the famous sliders, the Rhino slider, the, the grasshopper sliders. And just by connected, you, you, you can see that the number here changes and also the number in visually also changes. So that was the second example. And then the third the third and last example will be more of a real parameter or like um, a, flow, a flow type of number, not an integer. So yeah, we same, we, we search for the parameter, we change its value from uh, from Grasshopper. And as you can see, it's all real time. That's the benefit of having the two APIs interacting in real time directly. So yeah, so now we change the values in the, in the host software, but via Grasshopper. So that's the first use case, which is accessing and modifying parameters via Grasshopper. Uh, the second use case is a more complex one where we'll get a geometry from top solid, modify it in Rhino, and then send it back to top solid. It will be sim it will look similar to what we did into Speckle, but with some some different some different applications and it's a different use case. So here again we launch the command that launches uh, Rhino and Grasshopper from top solid, both uh, are running and maybe I can just go a bit quicker. Yep. So basically I have a, a surface that I modeled into, into top solid. I'll go and get it, get this geometry. So again, same technique. I go to search for the name of the entity. I tell it, I tell uh, grasshopper, what is the name of the entity? He brings it to us. So if you go here, bam, we have it in real time and we have it in Rhino. We can now start like doing some stuff on it. I'll go a bit quicker. So, so yeah, maybe, maybe I shouldn't go quick. So yeah, what I wanted to do early is that I like, I, as you can see is that I hid all the elements in the visual, um, in the visual part of top solid, I hid all elements so that when I start a preview from from here, we see that it's only when I connected something here that we showed something here. In, in when I connected a button here into Grasshopper, we saw something happening into Top Solid. So we go on. We start to do the modification. 
like a basic a basic thing i don't i, I won't go into details of of grasshopper it's not the it's not the object of this presentation so yeah i do a twist just basically a basic twist uh, i give it a value between 0 and 36 degrees so yeah well i did a modification so now i want to get it back into into top solid and pam in real time i have the preview of this form it's not yet created so i i can select it it's it's just a preview into into top solid but now when i do a bake now you can see a surface was created into into top solid and now i can remodify change the value here of the of the angle and so i have another the preview of a different form when i'm happy with this one i can once again do another bake and then i have the second surface that is created finally into top solid so that was the second use case which is the most elaborate into two directions with geometry conversions uh, and now i'll pass to um, to the last one which is uh, using Parakit. So basically the idea of this one is to show that once we establish the connection between top solid and grasshopper, we can like make use of the different uh, plugins that exist for, for, uh, for grasshopper. For instance, here it's Parakit. Again, the, the idea is not to show you something in grasshopper itself, it's just to so, show you the interaction. So maybe I can go quicker. And so like here, I created a pattern, I can connect it and then send it into top solid. For those listening to us who have some experience with wood, know that it's very important to, to, to generate this kind of, of uh, pattern for wood design, for different stuff. And, and like connecting both of them can have like the advantage of these plugins that exist for grasshopper and, um, and like the power of of top solid for the fabricate for the fabrication process so basically that's that's it for the for the for the demos just to to mention uh, to work on this we found that this link was very useful on github the rhino inside workshop there's a wiki that explains how to to create a rhino inside project there are some examples like how to run Rhino into a console application, uh, a WinForm, uh, and different kind of projects that exist here. It can be useful if someone wants to do their own Rhino inside into a software they have. Just I have to to have some acknowledgement and like to give thanks to Regis Widmer, who is who used to be my uh, colleague and who started with me this project for his contribution and. Uh, and like his genius solution into into resolving some issues. Yeah, he was a problem solver, to to say quick. So now we are done with presenting the technical part. We can go to to do a recap about the experience. So basically, uh, we have two scenarios for collaboration. So and uh, to which we responded with two different developments. They are currently under work in progress, so they are not final solutions, but for us, it was important to test both of them and see if they both worth the, the time and effort to invest in them. We see that both of them were interesting and um, we can say like that one solution of, or what solution or the other is better. It's just that there are two different scenarios depending on the project, the use cases, the, the type of collaboration, interoperability needed. Uh, it's just two responses that are different. What's important is that what we wanted to show you is more specifically is the method that we we used. Um, basically, like we we identified the problem for us. It was interoperability between Top Solid, the software that we are using, and the other AEC softwares. Uh, so we came up with the idea of looking for the existing solutions. We did not invent anything. We looked for Speckle that already exists. We looked for Rhino Inside, which already exists. Both of them are open source projects. And then we started like checking if it works for us or not. Fortunately, they worked. 
and uh, both of them work so it's it's perfect uh, and then right now we are satisfied with the first demos there is a lot of work to do but uh, for us we can have like a we have already a proof of con on, of concept we see that both both solutions are working and are giving results and are promising uh, we had some challenges, of course, like as Thomas mentioned, mentioned uh, in his presentation, we are not we are not experts in the API of uh, of, of Top Solid. Neither uh, we don't know the speckle secrets. We just have the code, which is open source, of course. But we are from outside of the community, so we had to to like go check, look for stuff, try an error, uh, look for documentation and stuff. So yeah, there was a lot of challenges. The geometry uh, conversion, for example, was was a headache. The the B reps, which are which are always invalid. And then you'll have to like to spend days and even weeks looking for the reason why your B rep is invalid. So yeah, uh, that's basically how we overcame them by try and error, looking for the good documentation that we tried to show you also in the presentation. We showed you the resources we had, and uh, and also I think it's very important to mention that where and when to get help. It's important like to to check for the right source of solution. Like for, for instance, talking about Speckle, you can go to the forum, ask questions, and the community is really quick into replying to your questions, like offering help, uh, and, and just like, don't hesitate. If you have a question, like go and ask on the forum, most probably you'll have your the answer. And sometimes someone will answer your question into like into a couple of minutes and then Instead of you like spending days looking for the answer that already exists, just go and ask the, the right people. So um, finally, um, what's next? So as I mentioned, we are we are currently into a state where uh, the development is um, like is proved. We we can see that it's useful. It can it give results uh just what we again what i what we wanted to show you in this presentation was more of a method the way we worked and we the way we think people in academia should work like by identifying the problem look for solutions uh and also and especially like bet on on open source and uh because we are we really believe it's it's the only solution we have we can't rely on to proprietary softwares and file exchanges and stuff like this, it just won't work. So um, I just go to the last slide. I'll leave it to you, Thomas, to end it. Yes, thank you. Thank you everyone to be connected. Um, yes, we, 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 have, um, we have time to read your, your message. Leave, leave us uh, on Twitter or or other uh, platform, a little message if if you like this presentation, all this uh, ID workflow ID. Um, yes, thank you very much. Yes, I'll I'll just go into the messages. I saw that someone, some people asked the question. Yes, we we will make a listing with all. Uh, available link in this presentation. I think it's easier to to have um, in the YouTube um, video in the description. We pass the the links. Yes, and and don't hesitate like to get uh, to get in touch with us on GitHub on Twitter. You have here our coordinates, or even via Hopin the application. Uh, I see that Daniel Depo asked a question about uh, the approximate cost of a top solid wood license. Uh, I don't have a number in mind, but it's especially that the wood uh, lies the wood version for the for top solid seven is not out yet. It's it's already it exists for the version six. So I'll have to ask. Just just send us a message, and I'll get back to you. I can put you in contact with the right people. 
uh, also someone else asked Andres Moreno Basquez who asked uh, about uh, the precision we look for in our digital digital development so the precision well uh, by default when we work in top solid the unit is in two millimeter so and approximately uh, yeah that's the unit when we do some conversion I, I, I I'm not sure I understood the question but when we do conversions I, we stick to to like five decimals of a, of a, of a millimeter so it's it's I, I'm talking about the the software part the the code part but about the design we we stay into millimeter I think if that answers the question I don't know if there are other questions in the chat uh, that's new message or in Yep, so I don't know. Uh, so if that if that's all, thank you guys for for uh, having listened to us. And thanks to Speckle for organizing this uh, this conference. It's really fun. And we really enjoyed working with you and presenting our work. And to all those who watched, once again, you can get in touch with us. And if you have questions, even suggestions, if you want to test the development on, on projects you have, don't hesitate. Just hit us with a message. And, and that's it. I'll leave it to you, Jed, probably. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you very much. Pleasure having you present. Thank you. The pleasure is ours. Okay, if there's no more questions, then I think um, we can all just leave this session. Perfect. So okay. thank you very much. Bye -bye. Thank you. Have a nice evening. Bye -bye, everybody. In the next session. Bye. Yeah, bye then. Thank you very much. Bye.